He figured the amount would be enough to bring the owner to his senses. However, as more people came and the screams grew louder, he realized his plan had failed. Now he had to choose between giving up or moving on. Florida may be the state of messy weather and retirement communities, but for Kim Jeffers, it was home. It wasn't just the pristine laws and nearby beaches that made them happy. The seafood was plentiful and was to die for. There wasn't a clamor lobster that he hadn't tried. He was also proud of the long line of reviews he left, but soon speaking, her mind would turn against her. It was a muggy Saturday afternoon and her desires were already out of whack. She loaded her three children into the minivan and drove to Barnacle Bill's, a seafood restaurant that had some of the best oysters she'd ever eaten. It also had a fun cowboy theme. The kids also really wanted to eat fish and chips, but as she pulled into the parking lot, a new sign caught her eye. Kim read the words and her urge immediately vanished. Each letter on the towering marquee made her blood boil. How the hell could the owner think that was okay? She stopped the van and stared at it. When the initial shock wore off, indignation shot through her. She turned the van and drove away. I wouldn't eat in a place like this. Since the children were hungry, she went to the nearest restaurant. She tried to forget the sign and enjoy her meal, but the anger stayed with her throughout it. I couldn't ignore something like that. He was so cheeky and despicable, I knew I had to do something about it. And she did. After the meal, she went straight to Barnacle Bills. She was a woman on a mission. She pulled out her cell phone, took many photos, and even made a video with her personal comment. The next step was to share what she recorded on as many social networks as possible. She wanted the whole world to know about it. What she didn't know was that her post would go viral for all the wrong reasons. She was still furious as she uploaded the images and photos to social media. She wrote an angry post explaining the pictures and tagging everyone she knew. She asked them to share this post, hoping to spread her message in the restaurant's regrettable behavior, but something was about to go wrong. Kim let the post sit, proud and pleased with the number of likes and comments they generated. She'd raised an issue that outraged many people. It was enough material for them to feel comfortable confronting the owner directly and demanding the sign be removed. She walked into the restaurant with her head held high. Kim burst through the door and immediately saw the owner. He was behind the bar. She immediately cornered him and pulled out her cell phone to show him the evidence of his crime. She pulled out the photos and posts she'd uploaded to her social media account. She threw it in his face without saying a word. Her eyes narrowed and her lips pursed. I want this sign removed immediately and the entire community agrees with me, she snapped. Your poster is not only false and offensive, but also totally inappropriate. The saying, the customer is always right, should have sufficed, but he looked her in the eye and said, no, the poster stays. You don't like it? Go somewhere else. Kim's blood boiled hotter than the muggy Florida summer. Despite clear evidence that people didn't like what his sign said, he wanted to leave it there. Good, she said. It was time to play hard. You're gonna regret it. Kim said before turning and storming out. If she was angry before, now she was pure lava. Kim picked up dirt as she walked to her van. She thought about teaching this cheeky owner a lesson he wouldn't easily forget. As she drove home, a smile curled the corners of their mouth. She took a look at her now viral post on social media. Since she last saw it, she'd received even more likes and comments, and she had an idea. She looked at all the people who were interested in her post. Obviously, she'd drawn a lot of attention, an attention she wanted to take advantage of. She decided to organize a protest. She contacted everyone she had interacted with at her embassy and created an online event. She gave them the exact address and time to support her, or at least she thought so. The next day, 20 people with banners and t-shirts showed up at the restaurant, ready to stand outside and chant until the offending banner was removed. Kim was excited about the turnout, but knew many more people had expressed their participation online. She waited impatiently for a larger crowd to gather, sing her words in unison and act for her. She was in for a rude awakening. As her small group walked down the sidewalk chanting their demands, people stopped and took photos. Kim was delighted everything went according to plan. This would attract the attention of the whole world and add more power to her cause. She marched with her group shield in hand. She didn't know that someone was watching her. Kim kept an eye on restaurants' windows, waiting for the owner to walk out, remove the sign, and offer a sincere apology. For the time being, however, the owner kept the sign. They'd protested for a full two hours and he'd never even come near them. Then Kim saw something that made her jaw drop. Suddenly, a flood of cars began flooding the parking lot. They honked and shouted. Kim greeted them in complete surprise. I knew there would be more people, but I didn't expect so many to come. She couldn't believe that so many people cared about this sign as much as she did. What she didn't understand was that they weren't there for her. The queue of cars seemed endless. They honked and shouted. At first, she swelled with excitement, thinking she had more protesters. However, when she saw the red shirts and the huge group lined up on the other side of the restaurant, she finally got it. Her face darkened with shame as she realized what was happening. 
Kim's smile was quickly replaced with embarrassment, shock, and horror. These people weren't there for her, there were at least 50 people across the street. This new group was there to show support for the owner. Did they agree with his message? Kim was completely shocked. They got him to snake all the way up to their protest, but they were invited. With growing anger, Kim realized that these people had accepted the invitation to protest through her online event. She got back online and paid more attention to the series of comments that accumulated under her post. She froze when she realized that most people disagreed with her opinion. She put the phone in her pocket and looked at the sign. What does this mean? Kim stared at the marquee, seething with anger. The three lines of text were like a slap in the face. The first told everyone he was a member of a firearms group. The second says it's okay to hide and carry around his restaurant. The final acted as an incentive for people to vote for a certain unfortunate candidate. The opposition held their ground and screamed at the top of their lungs. What made it worse was that more people flocked to the restaurant to eat. Somehow, Kim's mission not only kept the signs up, but also brought the owner more profit. She now had an impossible choice. Every part of her wanted to stay there and show that she wasn't going to give up anytime soon. But after a few days, as she watched her page get smaller and smaller, she knew that a single person standing on the sidewalk was not going to make a difference. She reluctantly went home, but she still had an effective plan B. She would fight fire with fire. Kim went through her past reviews and found a few places that had views more in line with hers. She posted her information online and encouraged everyone to do business there. The summer in Florida still weighed heavily on everyone's shoulders. But now she was sitting in a place she knew was safe for her children. The owner was right. She should take her business elsewhere. She never set foot in Barnacle Bills again.